Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our online stream. Wherever you're watching from today, we want to say a big welcome to all of you. Our hope and our prayer for you during this online stream is that you'll be encouraged and uplifted. It goes without saying that we all miss gathering together. And during this time, I'm sure we all see the value of that more than ever. But let me remind you of this one simple thought. We don't have to be together to be the church. So wherever you are right now, be the church. Love your neighbor, help others, bring encouragement to your coworkers, call someone with encouragement, pray for others, bring comfort to those who are struggling and fearful. People all around us are in fear and are anxious about the future. Church, you have the answer. Let others see the hope that you have. In just a moment, Pastor Mike and the band are coming to sing songs of worship. And even though we're not physically together, you can do that right where you are. A little later, Pastor Benson is going to share some thoughts from the Word of God. And we believe that during this online stream, God wants to do something in your life today. So as we start, why not share this video with your friends and family? Someone may need to hear this today. And we'd also love to interact with you during the broadcast. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, we'd encourage for you to share your thoughts and make comments in the comment section. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We just ask that you just open up your heart and worship the Lord with us. There's no space that His love can't reach. There's no place where we can't find peace. There's no end to amazing grace. And take me in with your arms spread wide. Take me in like an orphan child. Never let
great is our God. The splendor of the King. The splendor of the King. You are clothed in majesty. And all the earth rejoices. All the earth rejoices. He wraps himself in light. And darkness tries to hide. Trembles at his voice. Trembles at his voice.
to the sink. And mend the broken. A love that came to our rescue. Despite our betrayal and our denial, we bore the weight of our sin. Facing death by being nailed to a cross. And while darkness appeared victorious, this love emerged from the grave. It is great to be with you again this evening. Even though we are in a crisis, it is a good time because I believe it has is caused most of us to reevaluate many things in our lives. And I ask the question as we come together this evening, what is your most prized possession? And some people have reevaluated and realized family is my prized possession, not my house and not the the vacation that I had planned or the amount of money I've had in my savings account. And when I think about it, I think about this ring that I have on my finger. It is a prized possession. And I can remember, and it only seems like a little while ago, that I was trying this on in front of my future brother-in-law, just sort of a bit of pride and talking about how cool it looked and all these comments you make, you know, preparing for that wonderful day. And he made this statement to me. He said, I hope you're as proud of that, he said, 40 years from now. And here it is. It's 40 plus years, almost 41 years later. And I will have to say, yes, I am just as proud, not of just the ring, but of the marriage, the, the years together. It means so much to me. But I believe that many of us come to a conclusion that our most prized possession is not found in this life. Our most prized possession is the Almighty, the eternal God. And I would have to say, despite all of the value I place on my children, my grandchildren, my wife, everything around me, my calling, the Almighty God, if we do not have Him, if we don't have an eternal security, we have nothing. But in saying that, I'd like to bring us a little further and ask this question for us to consider it this evening. What is God's most prized possession? The Almighty God created the world and everything in it. Revelation chapter 4 tells us, you created all things and for thy pleasure they were created. Everything for his glory and for his pleasure. The moon and the stars, when you look at the creation and the perfection of it, God created it for his pleasure. The heavens declare the glory of God. The sky proclaims the work of his hand. Yet of all creation, everything that God created, mankind, we understand, was his prized possession. Yet man sinned, but God didn't give up on him. And this scripture that I've seen this past week is so precious to me tonight. I'd like to read it with you. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word, and we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. Hear it this evening. Out of all creation, we became his prized possession. Now, when Adam sinned, there was separation, but God had a plan to bring us back. And it's clear in this scripture, it came because of new birth or it came through the new birth. I became his prized possession. One day when I accepted Jesus Christ into my life, I became a child of God. Now, that's not becoming religious. I didn't take a religious tag on me. I didn't become Pentecostal. I became a child of God. Just hear it this evening. Let it ring into your mind, that thought. 
I became his child. I became his prized possession. The word of God tells us in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, see what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are, a child of God. It is in my heart this evening. It is in my soul. This experience, this possession that I have in relationship with the eternal God, I became his and he became mine, a child of the living God. And it's for eternity. It's not just for life, but it's an eternal gift. I am his forever. What love God has lavished on us has shown to me how dearly he cherishes each one. This is real love. It is a relationship that is deep and being held dear by the almighty God. The song says, who am I that the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name, would care to feel my hurt? Who am I at the bright and the morning star would choose to light the way for my ever wandering heart? And my heart was wandering far from God. I am a flower quickly fading here today and gone tomorrow. We have been reminded of that in this crisis, how fragile life is. A wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind. Still, you hear me when I'm calling. Lord, you Catch me when I'm falling. You told me who I am. I am yours. I am yours. I belong to the eternal God. There is nothing greater in life. There's nothing greater for us to comprehend. I am his for all eternity. And he loves me beyond human comprehension. He desires and longs for relationship with me in a personal way and with you in a personal way. God is a personal God. It was illustrated to me recently, just a week ago, a lady in our church, Donna Stacy, actually was calling a business in the U.S. And as she made her phone call, this lady answered the phone and almost right away, she knew there was something not right. This lady was crying. And the conversation led to know that I have the wrong number. But the lady began to tell her her story. She just lost her loved one to the coronavirus. And the conversation continued, and then Donna said to her, well, I, I should, I'll, pr- I'll be praying for you. But she said, before I went in to say, I'll be praying for you, she felt in her heart, I'm going to pray with you. And she prayed with this lady on the phone. And the lady opened up, and they talked and shared. And the response of the lady was this, you, you thought you had the wrong number, but she said, God gave you my number. <laughs> God knows your number. God knows your life. He loves you. He desires and longs to be in relationship with you. He does care. God wants to have you as his prized possession. He longs to be in relationship with humanity. He desires that all creation, every tribe, tongue, race would be his. He is not willing that any would perish. It is not God's will that humanity would be separated from him. And it's not because of what I've done, but it's because of who he is. Not because of who I am, but because of what you, you've done for us and for me. Not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. God loves us. That's who he is. You're watching this this evening, and all your life you've known about God, but you have never come to know him a God that would love you this way. He paid the highest price for your redemption, that you would be his prized possession. He shed his life blood. Jesus Christ died on the cross, that he could be in relationship with you, that he could put the ring on your finger and become one with you. God gave his son. Jesus Christ shed his blood that he would have a relationship with you that is eternal, He wants to hold you in his hand. He wants to be in relationship with us. It is not religion. You may have been hurt by religion. You may have been hurt by church. You have been confused by all of it. But there's no confusion in the truth that Jesus Christ loves you. He cares for you. And he wants you to understand that. And child of God, if you're serving him, 
I encourage you to understand who you are, that you are his, his prized possession. Don't let the trials and discouragements of your life ever hinder the truth of that relationship in any way. And maybe you've served God and you've lost that relationship. You feel it's hopeless, there's no point. I want you to know tonight that you will always be his prized possession. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He cares for you and he calls you to come back to him. God calls the world to come to him. He wants you. He desires to be in relationship with you. That is what we talk about. Not the name of our church, but the name of Jesus. The name that's above every other name. That name that can restore you and give you life and give you peace beyond human comprehension. It is found in being his prized possession. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. As they come and lead us in worship this evening, I pray you will open your heart to this truth. We are here for you. You can contact us by phone, by email, anytime. I'd love to talk with you, pray with you, or answer your questions. May you be blessed this day. Lord, I come and I confess by I find my rest Without you I fall apart You're the one That guides my heart Lord, I need you, Lord I need you
defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. That's right, wherever you are this evening, just take a moment and just let him know how much you need him. We need you, Lord. We need you, Jesus. without you, Jesus. Lord, I need you. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your living home, your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love. Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord.
the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. So oh, Jesus, Holy Spirit, you are Thank you, Pastor Mike and Pastor Benson. You know, the reason why we do this is to share the hope that we have with you. You may feel hopeless for whatever reason. You may feel anxious or fearful during this time. And like Pastor Benson said, Jesus can restore you and give you life and give you peace. I'd like to pray with you as we finish up today. Father God, we just come to you tonight and we give you thanks that no matter where we are, you are with us and you've gone before us. Nothing has taken you by surprise. And God, I just pray right now, Lord, that we would feel your peace and your goodness and your strength in our lives. For those who are feeling anxious or fearful, God, I just pray that a supernatural peace would come into their lives in this moment, God, and in the days ahead. God, I pray that you would lead us that you would guide us. And I pray that in the midst of all the chaos around us right now, God, that you would bring good out of every bad situation, God, that we would see your glory. And God, I just pray that you would be with us, that you would protect us, and that you would help us in the days ahead to be kind to one another and to bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you need someone to talk to, or if you'd like to have someone pray with you, please, by all means, reach out to us. We love and miss you all. Have a great week.